Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I thought I would do something a wee bit different, do a Q&A session with you guys eh, on my inspiration and motivation, my time as an MSYP and UK youth leader, dealing with grief from the loss of my mum, eh, talking about my autism journey and a few other bits and bobs. Eh, so with that being said, let's get right in, into the video. Please guys, if you can, please like, comment and subscribe to the YouTube channel to keep up to date with more of my content. And yeah, um, just an FYI guys, I am uh, dealing with a cold, that's why I sound a wee bit different to what I would normally do. But I am getting over it, there's no need to worry. So with that being said, let's get right into the first question. So the first question is, who has been the most significant source of inspiration in your life and how have they influenced you? Well, there's a few people. Uh, there's my mum, uh, my dad, my group of mentors and friends, whether that be David, Andy and Luke. Um, but I would say the most important are my family. They have inspired me and motivated me to become the best version of myself. And I will get more into one certain member of my family who has motivated me the most and who I hope to make proud of the son she has raised. Uh, what moment or event sparks your motivation to make a difference in your community or beyond? That's a weird one because I've always been motivated to make a difference, to speak up, to speak, to use my voice. Um, in high school guys I was uh, bullied a lot for having a really enormous chin and for wearing glasses. I was bullied by a certain young person who was younger than me and he made my life a living hell. Um, I used to walk around the streets with my mum and we would go out at the weekends and I would sort of walk with my head held like very low. I would always stare at the ground, I wouldn't look up if I saw anyone in the street. And yet, bullying is not okay, it's not something that I advocate. Um, and if it wasn't for like youth services, my time being MSYP, the UK youth leader stuff, and also the stuff I've done since, I wouldn't have built my confidence up to the position where I am today, where I can actually talk about these sorts of things. Can you share a personal mantra or quote that you live by? So I am taking this from a YouTuber that I watch, it's someone who has inspired me to do YouTube content, and that is uh, the life of Tom or Syndicate and his motto is life's too short, make the most of it and it's something that I live by. You will notice of course I am wearing his merch today in this YouTube video but that is one of the primary motivations who motivate me to be the best version of myself. How do you keep yourself motivated when facing obstacles? Well, I keep myself motivated by looking at the bigger picture, like if you have a task that you've got to do on that day, you look at what's the easiest way to, to achieve that and also it's the satisfaction of after you complete that task that you think, wow, I've completed that task, I've made a difference, I've focused on myself, I've focused on my work, I've focused on my, my house, etc. Um, I keep myself motivated by listening to music, listening to podcasts whilst I'm doing like admin tasks or like house cleaning. Um, but I also think to myself, why, what do I want to achieve in life? And do I think that this is the best way to go around it? What book, film or piece of art have, has inspired you the most and why? Well, there is one book that I have read, and it's from the Diary of a CEO podcast uh, host and entrepreneur, uh, Stephen Bartlett. His book has inspired me the most because I read it every single morning when I wake up and I have my cup of coffee in the morning. So let's talk about my time as MSYP and UK youth leader for the US consulate. What motivated you to run for MSYP and what was your campaign like? So what motivated me to run was I wanted to make a positive change in Perth and I felt that there was a chance and an opportunity for me to make that positive change. I also wanted to engage with young people through 
a columns that I wrote for the Perthshire Advertiser, whether that was holding uh, weekly drop-ins at the drop-in centre in Scott Street. And yeah, I felt that my campaign was positive, it had a positive message, it had a clear objective of what it wanted to achieve. And yeah, I felt really privileged to have that position to be a youth representative for Perth and Ross in the Scottish Youth Parliament. One of my most impactful projects that I worked on was the um, legal highs um, thing that was going on in Perth a few years ago. Perth had a real issue with legal highs and you, I saw that every every week when I went in from the ser from the recent uh, service users uh, for Scott Street they would come in high as a kite and you would see them sort of coming down off of the highs. Uh, in Perth at that time there was three legal high shops um, and I wanted to see them closed down so I held meetings with uh, Perth and Ross Council Trade and Standards and at that time uh, Tayside Police which is now Police Scotland Tayside Division and Community Safety as well. Uh, how did your experience as MSYP influence your approach to leadership? Just being open and honest with everyone and kind of having dialogue with those that are against you or opposed to your line of thinking. It's about being open and having that dialogue, but also kind of focusing on the things that will make a positive change. What was your proudest moment as an MSYP? My proudest moment was standing up at the Perth sitting for the Scottish Youth Parliament and presenting my motion uh, to reclassify all legal highs as illegal under the Misuse of Drugs Act with my good friend uh, Callum. Uh, although it didn't pass um, when the blanket ban was introduced by the UK government, um, the Scottish Youth Parliament sort of changed their thinking on legal highs and supported the blanket ban and all of the recommendations that I had put forward in my members' motion. So I'll talk about my time as a UK youth leader and it was a huge privilege for me to sort of take a step in another direction of leadership and it kind of my time as UK Youth Leader came after I had been um, not successful in my re-election as MSYP. So I was going through a bit of a, a down spiral at that point. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go, where I saw myself and my journey. And the opportunity arose to become a UK Youth Leader and I jumped at that opportunity. It was a great opportunity, it was a great opportunity to network with fellow young people who were inspired and motivated to make a change, like John Loughton um, and his company Dare to Lead, whether that was speaking to people, inspiring young people here in the UK or whether that was inspiring young people in the US. It was also a time to come together and kind of network with as I say, young people or like broadcasters, um, etc. So it was a fantastic opportunity and I am sad that the Wylock programme doesn't exist anymore, but when I was part of it, it was a truly motivational and eye-opening experience for me. <laughs> How has the loss of your mum to MND in 2019 shared your perspective on life? Well, as I said before, the motto that I live by is life's too short and it sucked when uh, my mum lost her battle with MND. She fought it proudly and it was sad when we lost her because she was one of my biggest inspirations. She was my rock. She had been there through everything. And <clears throat> it was hard. Like, I will admit to you guys, it was hard. Like, I put myself into a deep, deep spiral of depression. I wasn't eating. I wasn't, like, talking to anyone about my issues, about how I was feeling. I was bottling everything up. And, yeah, it... <sighs> Sorry, guys. 
it was it was a a hard time because I just felt like if I don't say anything to anyone then everyone will think I'm fine and and that wasn't the case like I should have opened up more I should have listened more I should have been eating properly I should have paid my bills properly I should have you know not put my head in the sand and maybe that's something that's connected to the way that my brain works and I just feel now looking back at it that I just want to make mum proud of the son that she raised and it's it's hard because every day I do miss her and every day I want to give her a hug but I know that she's up there sort of looking down on me and I hope that she's proud of me and I hope that she's proud of the person that she raised and the person that I have become. So someone else asks how do you keep your mum's memory alive um, so I keep thinking about this because I keep reminiscing about the holidays that we went on about the opportunities that we had when we were kids that my mum worked really really hard and I want to use that as a motivation for me to kind of become the best version of myself I do also have something to admit to you guys I do have a tattoo of my mum um, on me that is kind of a daily motivation as to to become the best version of myself and I, I wanted to share with you guys it is on my wrist it is on the inner side of my wrist um, and it represents my mum and also the blue cornflower represents uh, the symbol of motor neurons disease um, I have tried to fundraise a lot of money for MND Scotland because they were fantastic when mum was alive through their support for mum and yeah I will forever be grateful so I did a bungee jump for them which raised over £800 and then I also did uh, the tatty run in Perth uh, which raised over I think it was like four, four or £500 for them so I will continue to do the fundraising that I need to do to help them in any way that I can. So kind of going back to talking about like my brain and kind of my mindset and everything, uh, about a year and a half ago uh, my dad took me to get assessed privately for autism because growing up I had always known that I had dyspraxia and I kind of thought that I was on the autism spectrum but my mum didn't want to have me labelled so um, my dad and I decided to get private assessed because going through the National Health Service would have taken I think it was like two or three years whereas going privately we did it in about two or three weeks and yeah it's really been eye-opening for me to have that diagnosis because it lets me understand what makes me tick what way my brain works and also to kind of it in a way like my autism makes me unique it's not something that I am ashamed of it's not something that I hide away it will always be there like when it comes to certain things my brain is just wired differently and it takes me a couple of times to get it right best example of this is this YouTube video I think I've recorded this video about three or four different times and had to cut and to restart it again so yeah i would say that that is something that affects me on a day-to-day -day basis is my autism but also it is a driving force for me to become the best version of myself and focus on the future that lies ahead i would also say guys that when I talk about these things, um, I try and be open and honest about like my my autism diagnosis and also like the dealing with my mum's uh, sad uh, passing. So if I don't share a lot of stuff or I don't 
it seems like I'm being distant, it's, I'm not, I'm just trying to recollect and sometimes it is emotional, kind of going back to those tough, dark days, but those dark days have kind of evolved into brighter days and looking forward to a brighter future where I can be the best version of myself and, as I said, make my mum proud. So, I hope that you guys have found that truly uh, informative and if you guys have any other questions, please put them down in the comments down below. And above all guys, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And yeah, I will see you guys very soon. Cheers guys.